In the summer of the great flood, before the sky has gone to weeping, the trees are scarred and bleeding sap, chewed to ruin by moths building tents in their leaves. Behind the rusted pipe in the back field, a boy picks flowers for his mother, daisies, chrysanthemums. In truth, they're only dandelions, but he pretends them to be something more. His mother trims their stems and sets them to soak in a vase full of water. A garden hose pours down the gentle slope of the front lawn, showers onto black plastic that has been laid down for sliding. At its feet, a small pool of muddy water which looks to the boy as though it must be the clearest lake in all the world. The creek down the road is low red mud. It cakes on the boy's shoes, makes dusty rings around his ankles. He wades in to catch crawfish, grabs them by the tail and plops them in mason jars. His mother tells him not to bring them in the house, those filthy beasts. The boy's G.I. Joes have their legs bound at the boot with long strands of yarn. They plummet off the bridge, kiss the surface of the stream, are then rocketed back in the air. The sun is loud, always yelling, always making the boy's skin crawl with fire. There is so much red everywhere, in the water, in the soil, in the scorch of the boy's arms and neck. He rides his bike up the path, races his best friend to the secret place, the deepest bend in the creek where huge rocks came crashing down so long ago, made a bowl or a crater or a bottomless pit. Just before the rain comes, the boy looks over the trickle of Deer Creek. Just look at all that water, he gasps. If only we could swim. <laughs>